every year I make a list of books that I believe that every software engineer should read, regardless of what your expertise is, whether you are a front-end developer, a back-end engineer, or you eat machine learning models for breakfast. I believe that being a good software engineer in today's world isn't just about being the best programmer or a great designer. A good software engineer holistically understands the process of creating software, the requirements, design, implementation, and deployment. And it doesn't stop there. A good software engineer understands the data signals and incremental improvements through modern machine learning pipelines, all in a very globally distributed setup. So to that end, none of the books in this video will be teaching you how to learn a specific programming language or a framework. I even made a video recently about why you don't need books to learn a new programming language. Um, this list of books will instead teach you the concepts and give you the tools and strategies to become a great software engineer from a very holistic approach. Hi folks, my name is Utsav. I'm a software engineer based in Seattle. Over the past 15 years or so, I've held diverse software engineering roles, created a few tech startups, and I'm currently at Microsoft. If you're new to this channel, my goal here is to help you get the best out of your career by mentoring you around five key pillars of career development, technical skills, engineering efficiency, mindset, entrepreneurship, and financial freedom. So if that sounds interesting, please consider subscribing and follow me for behind the scenes and monthly Q and A's. Okay, so whether you're just starting out as a software engineer or you're a professional already, you will need a thorough understanding of programming concepts like data structures and algorithms. For this, my recommendation hasn't changed from last year. The one book I would pick to recommend is Aditya Varghava's Grokking Algorithms. The biggest reason I recommend this book year after year is because it explains complex topics in data structures and algorithms in a very simple, intuitive manner. Don't take me wrong, very white paper-ish academic books like Intro to Algorithms by CLRS or Algorithm Design Manual from Skinner have their value. But I do feel like those tend to be unnecessarily complex and scare away a lot of engineers from getting interested in complex concepts. Without interest, you can't progress your learning. This book takes the opposite approach by explaining things in a very casual and fun manner, but is more than adequate to help you thoroughly grasp the concepts. And if you ever want a more technical approach, you can always pick one of those more academic books as a follow-up to this one. You can learn all the coding you want, solve all the lead code problems blazing fast, and you will probably do quite well in coding interviews, but for actually being a good software engineer, that alone won't get you too far. There is an art to putting all your raw knowledge about coding and design together as an extensible and maintainable package that we call software. And this usually comes with years of experience, the learning that you get from doing the right things and all the wrong things. The good news is that you don't have to wait a decade to gain some experience. Some books package this information in a very digestible and usable form as a set of best practices. One of my favorite books for this is Martin Fowler's Refactoring. I used to recommend Clean Code and Clean Architecture by Robert C. Martin as part of this category, but I decided to drop those books this year. I've been building software for more than two decades now, and now more than ever, companies and teams have moved to rapid prototyping, where you build a hack together proof of concept, completely drop it if it fails the feasibility test, or gradually turn that hacky POC into production grade code if it passes the initial sniff test. In this system, there's really no time to write this perfect enterprise level code that follows all the best practices. In the middle of grabbing the next opportunity and turning around a workable demo to get buy in from your senior leadership team, there is no time to follow the golden route of perfect software design. And this is why the act of refactoring, which is basically improving existing code, is way more important than writing great code in the first place. And that's what this book is all about. How to take crappy, hacky, unmaintainable code, whether it's yours or someone else's, and transform that into bug-free, maintainable, and extensible production-ready code. I'll also add a note here, not just for this book, but for any book that teaches you best practices, don't take them as the Bible of coding and instead as a supplemental information that you could potentially apply in your scenario. Because not every principle applies to every situation and understanding that is as important as understanding the concepts themselves. 
Okay, if you're still wondering what distributed systems are in 2024, you have either been living under a giant rock or you simply don't realize that literally every decent application you use is a collection of one or more globally distributed systems. Simply put, days of hosting your entire application on a dev box under your desk are long gone. Even if your application is a monolith, it will have multiple tiers that will eventually be distributed regionally or globally for availability, redundancy, disaster recovery, and so on. So it's imperative that every software engineer at least understands the major concepts behind distributed architectures. I have two book recommendations for this and they have remained the same for a few years now because one, the space hasn't really seen any radical changes in these years and two, no better books have come out. If you're absolutely new to distributed systems, start with Roberto Vitello's Understanding Distributed System. This book does for distributed systems what grokking algorithms does for data structures and algorithms. It simplifies the concepts and makes it easily digestible even for beginners. At the same time, it covers a lot of ground and gives you a high level view of the entire space. I won't go into much more detail here, but if you're interested in the details about this book, check out my review I did a while back. If you have worked with distributed architectures, whether practically or academically, then the next step is the holy grail of books for distributed systems. And that's Martin Kleppmann's Designing Data Intensive Applications, commonly known as DDIA or just the Red Book. Uh, this book takes every concept covered in understanding distributed systems systems and dives much deeper with implementation details, case studies, and even algorithms, which makes this book also a great follow-up for the first one. Similar to distributed systems, if you're not data-driven in 2024, you're not doing it right. You don't have to be or need to be a data scientist to understand data. Even a high-level understanding of what signals to look for, how to collect data or interpret your data and telemetry in a statistically accurate manner will go a long way in your software engineering career. Now, if you're an actual data scientist, you will be reading a lot more technical material in and around data science. But since this video is for software engineers, I will recommend two books that are very easy Easy reads but will give you deep insights into how you can leverage data to your advantage. The first book here is The Signal and the Noise by Nate Silver, which, as the name suggests, explores the idea of separating signals from the noise. I've seen this happen too many times over the course of my career where teams and even organizations obsess over certain metrics just because they have the data to populate set metric and not because the metric is actually important or actionable. So how do you decide what data to collect, how to make sense of it, and also confidently ignore a lot of stuff that comes in as noise? The last part is equally as important as capture valuable data. I love this book because it investigates the idea of making predictions by distinguishing true signal from a ton of noisy data. And the scenarios used in this book don't have anything to do with software engineering. There are things like baseball, hurricanes, gambling, and the stock market. And that is the beauty of data. It is universal which also means that the lessons you learn from this book are easily transferable to the field of software engineering. The second book is about statistical literacy. If you don't understand some key concepts in statistics, you will not be able to make sense of data regardless of how much noise is filtered out. I remember when I first started working with data, I realized that I was a bit weak in some of the concepts in statistics. So I reached out to a buddy of mine who's a data scientist and he recommended the book Probability and Statistics to me. It was a good reference book, but I felt like I was back in time doing college mathematics, and that's the problem. Most books that teach mathematical concepts tend to be very academic, which takes a different mindset to read, and which isn't always fun. But fear not, because The Art of Statistics, How to Learn from Data by David Spiegel Halter will help you learn all the important concepts in statistics while chilling in your couch. Seriously, this is one of the easiest reads in statistics that covers such a wide breadth of concept. This book also has a ton of examples where statistical reasoning was applied to real world problems. And this anecdotal form of teaching really helps you grasp the concepts, helping you form a mental model of how you can interpret data to answer the questions you have. Since we are discussing the topic of data, I cannot ignore the elephant in the room, especially not in 2024. With diffusion models like Sora that just launched a few weeks ago, we have gone from AI generating crappy videos like scary Will Smith gobbling spaghetti to a pristine render of a couple walking around in Japan in less than two years. And with the speed and intensity at which AI is being tagged to literally any application in existence, it would be foolish as a software engineer to not at least have some core understanding of machine learning. I have three book recommendations for machine learning. The first one is the 100-page machine learning book by Andre Burkhoff. 
This is a great little introduction to the world of machine learning. It covers the basics of some of the most common machine learning concepts like neural networks and deep learning, which is what models like GPT-4 are based on. I would say that this is a very solid first machine learning book. Um, it's not going to make you an expert in ML, obviously, but it is going to cover all the basics in a concise and fun manner without overwhelming you or putting you to sleep. If this book sparks your interest, then you can always refer to a more advanced book. And that's my second recommendation. If you want to get a bit more in depth, my recommendation is to go with Deep Learning by Joshua Bengio and Ian Goodfellow. This is your typical machine learning book that covers the details and nuances in a more academic fashion. Or you can also go for the tried and tested route of the old book, AI, A Modern Approach by Peter Norvig and Stuart Russell. My final recommendation here is Designing Machine Learning Systems by Chip Hewen. Since we are software engineers, rather than being experts in the models and algorithms themselves, chances are likely that we will end up building systems that deal with machine learning. And that's exactly what this book is for. Um, it's essentially what designing data intensive application is for distributed systems. It guides you through the process of creating training data, feature application, model retention, and a whole lot more. But if you aren't too keen on starting your machine learning journey all by yourself, then today's video sponsor, Interview Kickstart, and their Switch Up course can help you transition your career into AI data science or machine learning. Look, the shift to artificial intelligence is here to stay, and all of us will have to adapt our skills in some form to match these emerging trends, whether it is out of interest and curiosity or out of requirement. But maybe you're not into learning a whole new language or a stack by yourself, or maybe you're a busy working professional who does not have time to go through all these books and tutorials and things like that. Whatever the reason is, if you're eager to transition your career into AI data science or machine learning, Interview Kickstart's Switch Up program is an excellent choice. Both their data science and machine learning curriculums cover the foundations and the essentials like concepts in mathematics and statistics to get you started on the right track. Each course also has a capstone project to exercise all your learnings along with dedicated interview preparation time. The classes are all live, focused on practice learning and are agile with heavy focus on job interviews. And the best of all, they're taught by a combination of FANG engineers and university instructors. Through the course, you can also be assured that you will receive top-notch mentorship and one-on-one -on -one mock interview sessions from industry professionals who understand the hiring processes behind some of the best companies in the world. With a strong alumni network of over 16,000 professionals, you'll have access to referrals and insider tips to help you land your next job interview. So if you're interested in transitioning your career over to AI data science or machine learning, attend Interview Kickstart's free webinar to see how their switch up course can help you. The link will be in the description below. Also, thanks to Interview Kickstart for sponsoring this video. Okay, my next section is primarily for engineering managers, but I encourage everyone to read this because most of us will likely someday become software engineering managers. The book is Engineering Management for the Rest of Us by Sarah Drasner. This is an excellent book that gives you an insight into the world of engineering managers and gives you some amazing pointers at being a great one at that. As someone who's managed many different teams, both as a tech lead and as an engineering manager, I definitely think that this book has some very good advice, pointers, and real world examples to help you navigate your path as a software engineering manager or a future software engineering manager. This book explores all the key areas that you'll deal as an EM, prioritization, execution, collaboration, escalation, feedback, and culture to name a few. Okay, we're still not done. This year, I decided to add a brand new category called case studies to my book recommendations. Look, you can learn technical concepts from pretty much anywhere. But hearing stories, anecdotes, and real world example though, they really help you grow. And unfortunately, you can't really get them from most books or generic YouTube videos that appeal to the masses. That comes with experience. But I have found that there are a few books over the past few years that I've released um, that do a great job at filling that void. And that's how this category was born. These are two books that share very unique anecdotes about the successes and failures in architecting large high-scale applications. And I think that both these books do an excellent excellent job at giving you a glimpse at how it is to build large applications at some of the biggest companies, like the likes of Microsoft, Google, Amazon, so on and so forth. The first book is Software Engineering, The Hard Parts. This is a great book to pick up because it is literally a collection of real world examples explaining anecdotally why large applications, especially with distributed architectures, are hard. Why things worked when they worked and why they failed often catastrophically. While this book will never replace real experience, as I said before, this is the closest you'll get 
to one that can give you a lot of information that only comes with experience. Please note that this book is not for absolute beginners. You need to have at least some understanding of how large applications are built or at least a theoretical knowledge of distributed systems to fully enjoy this book. My second recommendation here is software engineering at Google. If you have ever wondered how it feels like to work at a large tech company like Google, what engineering practices they follow to keep their code healthy and maintainable, or how they manage their large code base, this is a great book for you. And even though this book has stories about Google, the information here applies to pretty much any top tier big tech company. And while this book does not lay out the best practices like the book Refactoring does, for example, reading the stories here will still teach you some fundamental principles that involve designing, architecting, writing, and maintaining code. Okay, I promise this is the last category. I didn't want to make five different videos about books trying to milk as many views as possible. Instead, I wanted to make one really holistic video that can help every software engineer in all aspects of their work. And even though productivity isn't directly related to software engineering per se, it's hard to leave it behind as a category because if you aren't productive at what you do, you will never really reach the highest potential output you can actually provide. Now, productivity is a massive topic, one that probably warrants a video on its own, but for the sake of brevity, I will make only one recommendation here. If you had to read one book on productivity, go ahead and grab Deep Work by Cal Newport. This book examines current workplace culture and the unintentional distractions faced by employees and offers strategies to overcome these distractions. This book is essentially divided into two parts, the idea, which discusses labor trends and the rise of machine learning and practical rules for achieving deep work. And the second part is the rules, which provides practical guidelines and strategies for achieving deep work by emphasizing the importance of training the mind to focus and minimize distractions. Software engineer or not, I'm sure anyone that reads this book will get value out of it. Also check out last year's book recommendations for additional books that I did not include this year that still have value. And if you have any recommendations on your own, please add them in the comments so we can all read them. And definitely watch my review of the Apple Vision Pro from a software engineering point of view. And finally, please do the usual and help out the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.